Welcome to my YouTube channel Momentum 99. In this video, we will be studying the definition of uh, dynamics of machineries and we will be brushing the basics of uh, mechanics now. How mechanics is defined? This is our first topic in this video. Mechanics is nothing but it's a branch of physics where you will be studying the or you will be analyzing the forces and its effects while acting on the, the bodies here. Now, study of analysis of forces is nothing but finding out the nature of the forces, whether it is tensile or compressive, finding its direction and also finding its magnitude, how, may, how much uh, Newton of force is acting on the, the body under consideration. Now, when we speak about the bodies, there are two types of bodies which will be, will be considering during the analysis, either the mechanisms or the machines. Now, in both these mechanisms or machines, they will be having the combination of n number of links or parts now. Now, these links or parts will be having the motion called as relative motion. Now, relative motion, we know the definition is nothing but the motion of study of motion of one part or a link with respect to the other part or a, or a link here. Now, this is the basic definition of mechanics here. Now, studying the classification of mechanics, uh, mechanics is classified as first is statics and the other part is the dynamics here. Now, to look at the statics, statics is a branch of mechanics where you will be analyzing the forces while acting on the bodies which are at rest. Now, since you will be considering the Analysis of forces while acting on the body at rest, you will not be considering the self weight of the body or in other words you can tell us the inertia forces of the bodies are neglected in the cases of statics here. Now to quote the examples of uh, statics, we can list a few examples. For statics, the first example can be taken as the forces acting on the different links in any assemblies or the forces which are applied on different links when they are connected together and also the forces generated in the body while one end of the body is heated. These are the basic examples that can be taken as an example for statics here. Moving on to the second one, dynamics. Dynamics is also a branch of mechanics where you will be studying or analyzing the forces while acting on the bodies in motion. Now specifically we can say in case of dynamics you will be studying the, the relative motions of the, the bodies under consideration here. Now since in dynamics, you will be considering the bodies in relative motion or in motion. We will be considering this the self weight of the different links of the bodies. Or you can also say that we will be taking into consideration the inertia effects of the bodies under consideration. Now to have the example of dynamics, we can say we can take this example. There is nothing but whenever the combustion takes place inside the, the combustion chamber. The, uh, the products of combustion will be exerting pressure on the piston surface. Now, this force transmission from the combustion gases to the piston surface can be taken as example for dynamics here. Now, next is uh, this dynamics is again classified into two types. One is kinetics and the other is kinematics. Now, to learn the definition of kinetics is nothing but kinetics is a branch of dynamics where you will be learning the relative motion between the different parts taking into consideration the forces which are responsible for the relative motion. You will be considering the forces here. Whereas in case of your kinematics, you will be studying, this is a branch of dynamics where you will be studying the relative motion between the different parts of a machine or mechanism by neglecting or by not considering the forces which is responsible for the relative motion between the different parts, different parts of a machine or a mechanism. Now this is the Brief uh, introduction about the mechanics. So we have learned the definition of mechanics. It's classified as statics, dynamics, few examples, and the further classification of the dynamics as kinetics and kinematics. Next, we will be learning what do you mean by this kinematics of uh, machines and uh, dynamics of machinery. Moving on, we will be now seeing what do you mean by dynamics of uh, machinery. Now, dynamics of machinery is nothing but it's a branch of mechanics where we will be analyzing or we will be doing the study on analysis of the forces and the couples acting on the different members on a machine or a mechanism. Now, this analysis of forces or couples will be taking two different parts here. Now, first is the analysis of these forces and couples developed in the parts or members of a machine or mechanism due to the external static forces that is being applied on the, the machine or the mechanism. And the second part is we will be doing the analysis of this forces and couple due to acceleration of the members here. Now what do you mean by this acceleration of the member? Acceleration of member means it's simple. Whenever a body is in motion due to this external static applied load, that part will be absorbing the energy because of this external applied load and will be providing motion to the other member of a machine or a mechanism which is in the static state. 
So this transmission of motion from one part to other part, there will be generally there will be creation of this forces and couple. Now we need to analyze or we need to find out what magnitude of force or couple that is being generated because of the transmission of motion from one part to other. That is termed as acceleration of the member. So this dynamics of mission is nothing but a branch of mechanics where you will be analyzing the what is the amount of forces or couple being developed in the different parts of a machine or a mechanism considering two parts here. One is you will be considering the what is the amount of forces and couples due to the external static forces and you will not be considering here any dynamic forces. Static is nothing but where you will be having the forces of constant magnitude or even if there is a variation the magnitude will be very negligible this thing and, and the acceleration of the different members here. Now to take the examples of uh, the study of dynamics of uh, machineries we can uh, take the examples of any gears and levers. Now why this gears and levers needs to be studied here? Now whenever we use the components like this mechanical components like this one whenever to transmit the motion or tra transmit the forces from one part to another part there is a much help need to find out what is the maximum amount of forces and couples being developed in mechanical parts like this gears or levers as we have quoted the examples here. Now why? Now the amount of uh, stresses or the amount of forces or couples which are being developed in such mechanical elements should be always less than the, the allowable stresses of those particular material. Now the forces or couples when they are developed beyond the allowable stresses or the instances of the material then those parts will be subjected to failure ultimately leading to the failure of the entire this mechanism for the machine. So it is very very important to study what is the amount of forces or couple that is being developed in our bodies in our mechanism or machine while considering what is the external static force acting on the body and also due to the, the acceleration of the number. This is the main criteria of studying the dynamics of machineries. Moving on, uh, we will be seeing what do you mean by a force and the different uh, properties which are required to define completely a force acting at a particular point and also the basic aspects of representing the force acting at a particular point here. Now, forces are generally the vector quantities where it can be defined completely by using three properties here. First is magnitude. Generally, we will be telling the magnitude or expressing the magnitude in terms of Newton, say 60 Newton or 100 Newton. And the direction is nothing but the direction of the arrowhead used to represent the forces of the direction of the forces whether it is acting towards the point or away from the point. And the last is the point of application. At what reference point our force is acting. Now these are the three uh, parameters which are required to define our forces completely acting at a particular point. Now moving on, the basic aspects of representing the force or the principle of representation of a force acting at a particular point can be studied by using the help of this uh, very basic diagram here. Now let's take an horizontal reference fixed plane and I will be marking some point here and I will be naming this point as point A. Now at this particular point, at an angle of 60 degree with respect to the, the horizontal fixed reference plane, I will be making a force F to act here. So and the arrowhead, note from this diagram, the arrowhead is directed away from the point A. So we have this three point A's here. One is the 60 degree, it, it, it defines the, the, the point of application, the arrowhead it defines the direction and the quantity Fa it defines the, the magnitude of the force here. Now this taking from this diagram the magnitude is generally represented by the length of this line segment from what, what point the line segment is being drawn. The magnitude is represented by the length of this line segment the direction is completely defined by this arrowhead and the point of application is nothing but from where you will be starting this line segment. This is the general principle or this is the general or basic aspect how you will be representing a force acting at a particular point. And next we will be learning what you mean by a free body diagram. The free body diagram are generally represented by FBD. Now let's learn what you mean by this one now. Now these free body diagrams are nothing but sketches representing the isolated parts from a machine or a mechanism or any assembly in order to study the, the forces acting on that particular isolated part from the system. So learn, let's learn it again. Free body diagrams are nothing but those are the sketches of the isolated part from the machines or mechanisms or any system under consideration in order to 
completely study the forces acting on that particular isolated particle. Now, to see an example, let's consider a single degree of freedom, spring mass and damper system here. This is represented by using this uh, mechanical elements here. We have a spring having a constant K and we have a damper having a constant C and the mass M suspends at the end of the spring and damping constant C here. Now, now the mass can have a displacement X. Now, in order to find C, if you want to study the, the forces acting on the mass due to gravitation and due to the force exerted by the spring and also due to the force exerted by the, the damper or nothing but the, 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 the suspension, we will be writing, we will be isolating this mass from this spring and this damper here. So what we are doing is, what we will be doing, we will be isolating this mass and we will be just representing the mass with the help of a block here. Now, this is the mass here and the forces that is being exerted on this mass due to the gravitation is nothing but the F is equal to M into the acceleration. Since X is the displacement, we will be writing the acceleration as Mx double dot. Just look at here. This is not the Mx double dot, is nothing but the force acting on the mass due to gravitation. And K into X is nothing but the, the force which is acting on the mass in the opposite direction of the, the gravitational force. And also, C into X dot that is nothing but the damping constant into velocity is the force acting on the mass in the direction opposite to the of the, the gravitational force here. So, this spring constant and the damping constant they act in one particular direction whereas the gravitational force acts in the opposite direction of the spring force and the damping constant. So, from this system, system is nothing but mass, spring and damper, we will be isolating the mass and we will not be representing the spring and the damping constant here, we will be just representing the forces of the spring and the damper on the mass as well as this uh, gravitational force on the mass so that we will be having a clear idea of all the forces that is going to be acting on our mass under consideration so that we will be having an idea what the mass is subjected to what all nature of forces acting on it. Now this is the basic use of using the free body diagrams. We will be learning it better when you go on solving the problems in the future classes.